Today we're looking into DIY caviar eggs via molecular gastronomy. Guys, molecular gastronomy is a cool idea that involves using fun and strange chemicals to mix into your food to get different sort of like creations and results than you would get through traditional cooking and baking methods. It's not just gelatin. No, no, there's other parts to it. Today okay. though, what we're gonna be using is a sort of a gelatin, it's alginate. Not actually too different from the stuff we've used to make molds out of before. Okay. But this is an edible version of it and it's clear and we can choose the flavor. Here's the basic idea. We're gonna use some fun chemicals to try making our own flavors of DIY fish eggs. Now I've seen these before on like ice cream toppings and stuff when you go to like a frozen yogurt shop. It's kind of like that, is that what we're talking about? Like little boba pearls? It looks similar to that, yeah. Okay. It's, so the, the idea is that, well, those are usually made of, I think, tapioca. Yes. This actually forms an alginate gelatin shell around a little burst of liquid flavor in the middle. Okay. And they end up looking quite a bit like fish eggs. So we've okay. got multiple different kinds of liquids that we can try. So this whole process is called spherification because it makes tiny little edible spheres. Okay. There's also what's called reverse spherification. You just switch the chemicals around the other direction. Okay. We'll get more into what's happening in a little bit. But to start off, these are the main two ingredients. We've got sodium alginate, and there are actually a couple different versions of a calcium salt that you can use. What we've got is the calcium lactate gluconate. So we're gonna start off with the direct spherification method for which we're going to need both of these as well as a flavor okay. and some purified water. Ideally, I would've gotten distilled water, but the store near us was out, so this is purified drinking water. And the important thing is that it has way fewer minerals in it. The calcium that could be found in, say, our tap water might be enough to set off the reaction in ways we don't want. Let's start with Otter Pops. You've already got them open. All right. So we've got this in a blender cup. Now let's pour until we hit 200 grams. All right. Now take our sodium alginate yep. and add two grams of that. So we're going for 1% and blend it in the little blender on the counter behind you. Oh, it's so foamy. Yes. Keep going a little bit just to make sure okay. it's all well mixed in. You commented that this is very foamy. It is, it's very bubbly. The okay. sodium alginate really makes it hold bubbles very well. So your options are either you can let it sit until all those bubbles are gone, or if you're impatient like I am, you can put it in a vacuum chamber. Now, while Callie was preparing that, I poured 300 grams of our purified water into this bowl here. I'm now going to add three grams of our calcium lactate gluconate. I'm just gonna stir that in. Definitely foaming, a lot. And it may foam so much that you have to kill the pressure and Do it let again. air back in. Now we're gonna take some of this purple goo and just pull it into our oversized syringe. So this one has the sodium alginate in it and this one has the calcium base in it. These two are just water, there's nothing else in them. Oh, you like dip it in a water bath. It's for rinsing and then let it sit. So I'm gonna see if I can just send off a little drip and see if we get a nice sphere out of this. Oops. Well, I'm not that good at individual drips with this oversized syringe. So for people like that, they've actually come up with a cool little tool for it. This device is designed for dripping little spheres that are supposed to be really nice. Now really quick, I'm actually already gonna take these out because they're only supposed to need five to 10 seconds. Oh boy, yep, look at that. And I'm just gonna take them out of the rinse and leave them to just sit for a while in this water bath. Callie, would you like a single purple <laughs> sphere? Sure. Does look like a fish egg. That's fun. And it pops it and pops. tastes like grape. That well, is very fun. As much as the otter pops ever taste like grape. <laughs> now it's supposed to fill everything and then drip evenly. What it usually seems to do in my single use experience mm -hmm. is that this one right near the fill point well, just starts starts. dripping. Okay. And you know what? That's okay. Started working beautifully. Yeah, it does a great job. It's not doing all 96 at once that it says it will do, but it's doing a very good job with the one. They'll actually turn to gel all the way through if you leave them in too long. So they won't be popping anymore. Yeah, then they'll, I mean, they're still just like little spheres of jello at that point, which is an interesting texture, but it's not the one we're going for. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so this one we have is Yoohoo, which is sort of a chocolate milk based drink. Uh, we don't know if the calcium is going to mess with it. We don't know how well the flavor is going to come through. So this one should be interesting. <laughs> oh, it's dripping down. Huh. But it's not sinking. Yeah, it's floating on the top. That's weird. They work. We got little spheres, pearls, caviar. I think they are smaller and obviously they don't sink as well for some reason. Now we have to see if they're any good. Does it work? It actually comes through pretty well. Nice. We've also got cranberry juice, sparkling strawberry daiquiri, and Red Bull. Let's try Red Bull. All right. Now, I do think all of the carbonation is just going to be gone as soon as we vacuum it. Vacuum chambers pull all the bubbles out of stuff, and when we vacuum soda in the past, it's just completely flat. It doesn't form as well. No, it definitely doesn't. They're kind of weird, odd little shapes happening. Yeah. Now, I did some tests before we started filming, and uh, one of the things I tried was like straight pineapple juice. And you said the acidity. Acidity messes with it, yeah. And okay. when, when those dripped in, it didn't even do this. It just dissolved completely. So this it's at least a formed gel. a gel, but it didn't form like nice individual spheres. Yep, it's a Red Bull. There's no sphere, there's no mm -hmm. fun texture in your mouth, there's no pop. It's, it's just like kind of like watery jello. Yeah, like, yeah, it's kind of runny jello. It's not, not very good. <laughs> so now we're trying the reverse spherification, where you switch which chemicals go into what parts. So now our flavors have, instead of the sodium alginate, they have the calcium salt. The bath that we pour it into now has the sodium alginate. And at this point, the gel will form on the outside of the flavor instead of into the sphere. The longer we leave it in, the thicker of a coating it will get, but in theory, the inside liquid should stay just the same instead of eventually turning into a gel like okay. it was doing. So, so we could end up with a really thick shell. We could. So you've done it with cranberry juice. Yep. I have here some pineapple juice concentrate. Okay. And in theory, both of these things should work. The usual technique is to very carefully take a spoon that's nice and clean on the bottom, full of the liquid, and sort of pour it all in at once, and then it forms a little sphere. I practiced a little bit and I'm bad at it, but <laughs> I was getting a little better at it. And then at the same time, I have another mixture of this, the bath, which has got the sodium alginate in it. I have another portion of the same stuff on the stove that I'm trying to warm up to about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Now with the warm stuff, what we're going to do is if we take our flavor and we freeze it in a mold or something similar, and then we put it into this liquid, it should help melt the liquid and start forming that gel shell at the same time. This is what's often used if you're trying to make somewhat larger shapes. Rather than just pouring it in and hoping you're good at it, you just put it in, it holds its shape, and then as the gel barrier forms, it turns into a liquid again. You might be able to add a little, oh, no, it's sinking down in. It looks like there it made you go. a ball. You're going to be getting your little sphere. Hey, look. And now just give it, I think you're supposed to go longer. You're supposed to give it like mm -hmm. a full minute or something. And I want to give it a shot with my pineapple stuff. I'll be a bigger sphere. Bigger, less spherical, looking very much like an egg, egg yolk, yolk right now. Okay, that's a very thick shell, but it was a shell full of cranberry, cranberry juice. juice. That worked. All right, let's try and grab my little egg yolk, the cranberry attachment. Oh, that's the other thing, is it pops just like an egg yolk. So it's got a shell around it, and then if you stab it, like all the liquid will come out, but I'm just gonna eat it. Can't taste the pineapple yet, because it didn't pop. <laughs> that's really strong. <laughs> so this is now, heated we have warm setting bath pour that into this cup here because i took some of my pineapple stuff and i oh, filled a couple of water balloons a tiny bit and then i put it in the freezer so i have at least partially maybe all the way frozen little water balloons full of juice and now i'm going to put it into a very warm 122 fahrenheit degree setting bath so in theory, it will be melting it, and then as it melts, it will react with it, and I can already see that gel shell forming on it. And it's definitely becoming more liquid. I'm gonna get a good size egg yolk out of this one. Oh, good. 
it's too thick to mix up because when you make a poached egg to keep it circular, yeah, you're supposed you to spin, spin in the water. Uh huh. And people sometimes do that method with the reverse, where mm -hmm. you've got the calcium in here instead Trying of the alginate. Trying to spin it so you get that yeah, nice with perfect the standard sphere. spherification. But I think, like, I mean, look at that. You did. It looks like a full-size chicken egg yolk now. So I stabbed it a little bit by accident with the spoon. But as soon as it hits the water, it forms more of the Sphere alginate shape. coating. Look at that. Moves like an egg yolk. And you said blobbering isn't a word. Blobbering How else would you describe this process? Blobber, blobber, blobber. Like, I think you could fool pretty much anyone into thinking that's an egg yolk. All right, I'm gonna pop it. It pops slightly less easily than it's, an egg yolk. Uh, it's definitely runnier than an egg yolk on the mm -hmm. inside. It's so strong. Oh, that's so much flavor intense. Let's see what's left. There's our shell. So next up, we're gonna mix up our strawberry daiquiri, which just sounds really good to me. So this is gonna be a little bit different than what we tried before because the last carbonated drink we tried, which was the Red Bull, we put in the vacuum chamber. This one isn't going in the vacuum chamber, and I don't know how the carbonation is going to affect it. We don't need it like frozen solid all the way through. We just need a, a shell on the outside. This is a bubble formed inside the gel shell. Now, I don't know if that's because it was carbonated going in or if it just had so many little bubbles trapped inside the balloon, but it is forming correctly. It was just so solid that it's taking a while. So now we've got two. So these are both liquid nitrogen. One froze too much and we yep. broke off apart. The other froze, I think, just the right amount, and that's this one. And it's formed nice gel sack but he still has like a middle bit that's not thawed. You want to try it. Like I want to try it like it's an ice cube. Like if it were a drink, this one's still chilled because you're getting it served with an it ice is, in it. It is cold. And this one, slightly less cold. I let it thaw all the way. It does have what seems to be a fairly significant gelatin coating around. I'm trying to see if I can hold it. Like, there you go. Mmm. That's a fairly intense flavor. I'm not a big fan of the uh, gelatin skin left behind. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> like that works really nicely. The fact that you can use liquid nitrogen to speed the process up so much, I really enjoy that. That's really cool. So the reverse spherification process, that's the second one, mm -hmm. which seems to work great using the balloons, either in your normal freezer or yep. with the liquid nitrogen. We had good results, just don't freezer burn yourself. It worked, it worked really nicely. And we happen to have the equipment that makes it fast. Mixing the sodium alginate, it makes a lot of bubbles and those bubbles take a long time to come out. If you don't have a vacuum chamber, it's really recommended that you mix that up the day before. Just let it sit in your fridge overnight, let all the bubbles come out. Mm -hmm. If you have a vacuum chamber, it takes like a minute, just sucks them all out nice and clear. We have the liquid nitrogen, which lets us freeze things really quickly. So we get that nice orb shape. Yeah, we get the shape in the balloon and then we can easily just throw it into our warmed up mix and it works really well. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. And if there's anything you would like to see us try with all this stuff, we'd love to, because this was fun stuff. Frozen gasoline. <laughs> Guys, that's it for today, but you know, we've got tons of great content. Hit that box right there to watch another one of our cool videos and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.